So South Africa is not investable, in my view. You know, yesterday, it was Martin, I think, who was talking about, uh, um, you know, emigration. And he said, you know, if you were an alien sitting on a planet with a pile of money and you wanted to allocate it across the world, how much would you allocate to Africa and how much would you allocate to South Africa? The answer to South Africa would be zero. Zero. There's no way any foreigner or any foreign direct investment in their right mind would allocate a single cent to South Africa. There's black empowerment. There's over-regulated over you know, laws everywhere. There's, you know, the leftists are forcing CRT on us, and uh, there's diversity, there's ESG. There are all sorts of regulations that make it absolutely uninvestable. Now, I know there's a pool of capital that would love to come into this country, a wall of capital that would come into here, that would come into Zimbabwe, because of people love this country and would like to invest here, but it's not, they're not gonna, the money's not going to come in on the basis of where we are today. Black empowerment is theft. Expropriation without compensation is theft. Why would anyone invest in this country with those things hanging over our heads? I mean, it's uninvestable. Now, it can be fixed. South Africa can be fixed very, very easily. But have you, when was the last time you heard anyone in the ANC talk about the most, two most important words? Economic growth. Okay? Economic growth. When do they ever say those words? They never use them. They talk about redistribution. They talk about radical economic transformation. They're basically taking, talking about taking away from us and giving to themselves, not the people of South Africa, giving to themselves what they cannot build, grow, or invest themselves. They're incapable of doing it. When you see ministers, cabinet ministers, speaking on the television, deep down you're saying, this is not an intelligent person. This is a stupid person. I'll give you an example, okay? And this goes against my investment in an airport in South Africa, okay? Fakile Malula. I name names here. Have you heard him speak on television? The guy is not very smart. He's charming. He's polite. You wouldn't hire him for a single position in any business any of you own. And he's our Minister of Transport. And I think he's been in the cabinet since 94. This is a stupid person. And beneath him, and again, this, this goes against my investment in an airport, you have the Mpofu family husband and wife, who I happened to meet at a friend of mine's 60th birthday in Durban. He is the lawyer for the EFF. Dali and Pofu, the lawyer for the EFF. She is head of airports companies of South Africa. She is the ANC member. He is the EFF member. They hold positions of power. She believes in nationalization of land, mines, and banks. I mean, have you looked up the definition of the word moron in the, okay? Moron is an adult with the average age of 8 to 12 years old, okay? These are the people running this country. Why the hell would anyone invest in this country with people like that running this country? It's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment. And how many million of people vote for the ANC? That's an embarrassment. Now, our dear friend uh, Musi Maimani yesterday said there are 16 million people that don't vote. That don't vote. If you don't vote, it's a vote for the ANC. Okay? We need those people to get up and vote for anyone but the AFF and ANC. Well, this country is doomed. If I was put in charge of this country, I could get 10% growth and everybody would have an opportunity to get a job. This thing would take off like a rocket. It's very easy to remove all the restrictions, labor regulations, EWC, BEE, lift it, remove it, money will pour into this country. And the only thing keeping this country alive and above water are the people in this room, the people that get up every morning and make an effort and invest. 
but in some ways you're insane. You're still here. And I am too for coming back. You know? Your children, if they finished high school in this country, should be leaving to go overseas, to get a passport, to get experience, to get jobs, to learn how the, in the world works. And if ever South Africa does recover, if ever South Africa does turn around, they can come back. That's my thinking. My, all four of my children have been born overseas. They all have British passports. My older two have been educated overseas, and the oldest one is in LA, and he'll never come back to South Africa. The next one's doing business science at UCT. He'll leave the minute he's done. And the younger two, I doubt, will ever do university in this country because the leftists have taken over the universities here. They're forcing all sorts of left-wing CRT bullshit on, on my kids. And that's going to be the end of the universities. And if your kids aren't studying real degrees, accounting, law, engineering, medicine, science, IT, engineering, they're wasting their time. Anyone who's studying political science is an idiot. Why do we even offer political science in this country? It's pointless. I'm sorry if any of you studied BA political science anywhere, but that don't tell me it's an embarrassment, okay? <laughs> So, <laughs> the truth of the situation is, South Africa is not investable. Any investment longer than probably a three-year horizon is crazy, including my airport, um, and including what <laughs> Warren and I are just about to announce, that we're um, helping launch Cape Town Stock Exchange, Airport Stock Exchange, yeah. Independence. Yeah. If you look at the cover of the Financial Mail today, um, very quickly, I know I've got um, five minutes left. So there's an interesting thing that Alec brought up yesterday. He was mentioning some of the successful South Africans, South Africans abroad. But there's a statistic that I'm looking for very quickly here is, yeah, could you name the dollar billionaires that live in South Africa more than six months a year? Well, Krista Visa, Michelle LaRue, Stephen Saad, I think Johan Rupert's checked out. I think he's gone. He's as good as financially emigrated. Hasn't said a word for a year. Patrice Mozzepi, well, we never hear from him anyway. And he is Cyril's cousin or Cyril's brother-in-law. He's one of the people that should be saying things, but we don't hear a word. But if you want just an idea of some of the dollar billionaires born in South Africa that live abroad, and I know, Alec, you were trying to throw a few names here, but I've got a nice list here. Here are some examples. The two richest people in Los Angeles, number one and number two, are born in South Africa. Elon Musk, Patrick Soon-Shong. What about Jonathan Baer and Maurice, Maurice Kahn in Israel? Both billionaires. They've gone. They both live in Israel. They don't live here anymore. Vincent Mai from the Karoo in New York, one of the greatest hedge fund people, South African. Martin Michal in Sydney. Mark Shuttleworth, Kurs Becker, Natie Kirsch, Manfred Gorvey, all in the UK, all billionaires. Alan Gray and Clive Calder in the Caribbean. Ivan Glazenberg in Lithuania now. Rodney Sachs, Hilton Schlossberg. I can go on and on and on. There are probably 30 South African-born dollar billionaires not living in South Africa and not coming back. They may own a wine farm, they may own a holiday house, they're not coming back. And then there are hundreds of almost billionaires, people worth 100 to 5 to $600 million that you may never have heard of. Have you heard of Pierre Nordaire from Worcester? He, he listed his business Encino on NASDAQ last year for $8 billion US dollars. He doesn't own the whole thing. He's probably worth six, $700 million. Tony Tabatsnik, Michael Lewis, Viv Immerman, Kurbus Stoffberg, Rulof Borta was mentioned yesterday. Mick Davis, Robbie Brosen, Robbie Enthoven, Marco Mazzotti, Mark Bristow, Richard Nodder, one of the top four guys at Goldman Sachs. Peter Bauer. Anyone heard of Peter Bauer in Boston? Founder of Mimecast. Probably worth three, four hundred million. I can go on and on and on. These are people that are born in this country, raised in this country, but they're not coming back. Over 4,200 South African dollar millionaires have left the country since 2010 with total private wealth held in the country, declining by 25% since 
over the past decade when measured in US dollar terms. Furthermore, a huge number of small and medium-sized businesses have closed down, and the return on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange All Share Index is down by 12% of the past decade when measured in US dollars. We are going backwards. This is a spectacular place to live and not a good place to invest or build a business because of the ANC, simply because of the ANC. And I know I've got two minutes left, so I'll be quick. I've traveled to 35 of the 55 African countries. I've met 85 of the 100 richest people in Africa. I know that because I had a list and I said, I'm going to go make sure I meet them all. And I've met every single family office that has invested in Africa. And also many who are looking to invest in Africa. And when I look at Africa and when I make my speeches around the world, I say that there are probably 16 or 17 investable countries in Africa and there are maybe seven or eight that I would personally invest in. South Africa is not one of them. South Africa is not even on my list of 18. But yet, I came back, I've made investments, and I've committed myself to this country. So crazy I may be, as crazy as you are to be here today. So finally, a comment before I just throw a few ideas out there. If Nelson Mandela... If Madiba was alive today, he would vote DA. He would not be voting ANC. The ANC in 27 years has achieved almost nothing for the people of South Africa and only achieved for themselves by breaking and stealing. They have broken every state-owned enterprise in this country and they have stolen this country blind. If any of you believe there is a bad ANC and a good ANC, you are being stupid. There is no good ANC. Cyril is not our savior. There are no good people in that organization, and anyone still voting for the ANC is a moron and does not have this country's uh, interests at heart. I know you all agree with what I'm saying, and I know what I'm saying is highly inflammatory, but it's true. And we all know it. So my thoughts before we run out of time, and I, if I can have one more minute. Get your kids overseas with foreign passports. Get them educated overseas. They can always come back. When it comes to the basics, and South Africa has really lost the plot when it comes to the basics, at the schooling, at the education level, we should only really focus on the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Any, anything beyond that at high school, clearly is beyond the capabilities of the ANC to deliver to the, to the people. At university, if you're not studying a STEM subject, a hard subject, university is a waste of time. We have too many universities in this country pumping out too many graduates in the arts and, and rubbish like political science. They should be apprentices. They should learn skills like plumbing and engineering and fixing things and building things. That's our only chance. And one thing that really resonated with me with Musi yesterday when he said there was a rolling thunder of democracy and decent leadership in Africa, starting with Malawi, moving to Zambia, and maybe one day Zimbabwe, and maybe in our dreams South Africa, our only hope is the ANC will collapse under its own morally corrupt weight and disappear, and that out of the ashes will come the phoenixes of Musi, Vusi, Herman, and others, and the DA, and FF+, and good organizations like Afri Forum that will come out of the ashes and rebuild this country. But it's very sad that we have to f look towards economic collapse, civil unrest, and a failure of our society in order to build the country that we have always wanted. And I'm sure most of the people in this room who are my age did not vote for the Nats, and we do not vote for the ANC. When are we going to get the government that we want? And when are we going to have a country that's investable? It certainly isn't today. And let me give the glimmer of hope that's come to me, the little piece of hope. If you are to invest in this country, invest in technology. Because technology, technology is the savior of the younger generation and will allow the majority of our people, all of whom will have 
in the very near future, a smartphone in their hands because prices are coming down. This device is going to allow everybody to leapfrog bad governance and ridiculous ANC policies through edutech, health tech, fintech, and reg tech, regulation technology. This will be our savior. So if there's a glimmer of hope, it's technology. Thank you.